YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy James, making an opening, and today we are going over my Twin Sons 101, my ultimate Twin Sons guide for you. I know it is a little bit early for some people. Uh, I know a lot of people are holding out for set three whenever the official rules state that you can um, build up to 80 cards, singleton decks. And then you have, you know, an even bigger pool of leaders. At that point, we'll have 54 leaders in the game if it's another 18 leaders, which it's actually kind of insane, but for those of you that are playing Twin Sons now or want to get into it and don't know how or don't know how to start, where to start, where to look, hopefully this video is an excellent resource for you guys. Um, I've been playing Twin Sons uh, for, I guess, the last month now, and we're actually implementing it into our local game store scene. We're going to be doing casual Twin Sons nights uh, probably every week now, which is really cool. Um, people are thinking about decks to build. Um, and hopefully this video can not only help out the people that I know personally, but also everyone else out there in the big, big world that we live in. So in today's agenda, we're going to be going over uh, set one leader pairings and set two leader pairings, just in case people are hopped in in set two, or if people were um, in it in set one and just haven't got their hands on any set two stuff, uh, go over some optimal leader pairings and then, you know, some cross uh, set uh, pairings as well, uh, leader from set one and a leader from set two sort of pairings. We're also going to be going over some key words to look out for in Twin Suns. Uh, certain keywords are better than others, and in Twin Suns, um, it definitely stands out for sure. Finally, I'll be going over some of the cards that are a lot better in Twin Suns versus how they perform in the current constructed meta. Um, and then I'll also show you guys a deck that I made um, just about 30 minutes ago from scratch that I'll be taking to my upcoming Twin Suns nights at my local game store. Um, I have two Twin Suns decks already. I have Iden Palpatine combo uh, and also a Cassian uh, Han Solo from set one. Uh, they're really fun to pilot, um, but I am making a brand new Twin Suns deck. Uh, set two kind of inspired me and you'll be able to see what that looks like at the end of the video. So before we hop into it, what is Twin Suns? Well, as of right now, it's a 50 card singleton format. Um, when the set three drops uh, here in, um, I think it's November is when set three is slated to drop. Um, the official rules will allow you to go up to 80 card singleton, just because there will be a lot more cards out in the um, general pool of cards, of course. Um, singleton meaning one of every card. So cards, um, once you resource them, they're gone unless they have smuggle or if you have tech and you can give all your cards smuggle. Uh, once they hit that resource bench, uh, they're gone for that game. You won't be able to see them again. Um, and how it works is you have one base and you have two leaders. Um, leaders are restricted to the same faction, either light side or dark side, um, but they are not restricted to set or anything else. So you can pair Thrawn with Palpatine as shown on my thumbnail right here, or you can pair something like, um, you know, Krennic with Kira, set one and set two. Uh, as long as they are both villains or both heroes, you're fine there. Um, I recommend personally a 30 HP base uh, and a color that complements uh, the leaders or the, um, the game plan that you're going for. The 25 HP bases, um, it's really not 100% worth it. I say the 25 HP bases aren't really worth it because in Twin Suns, it's a little bit different than its counterpart in Magic the Gathering Commander. Um, as soon as somebody's base hits a life total of zero, whoever took that player out and defeated them, they're going to heal five HP, and then that's going to be the final turn of the game. Um, once all actions are taken and all um, tokens are claimed, initiative, blast, and plan, um, once all that's said and done, at the end of that turn, uh, instead of going to a regroup phase where you draw two cards, ready all your resources and everything, um, the player with the most remaining life wins the game which is why typically you want to run a 30 HP base. And one last thing before we get started, the two extra tokens, there is the plan token where you can draw a card and then put one of your cards from your hand at the bottom of your deck. And then there's also the blast token where every other opponent takes one damage to their base. So by default, the game is on a 25 to 30 turn timer, though don't expect your games to get anywhere really near turn 10, unless it's very back and forth, very competitive and very, um, you know, politic heavy. Uh, most games can end pretty fast, um, but you know, that's something that you'll have to determine in your own pool of players. All right, let's hop right into the set one leader pairings. All right, so here we are at leader combos. Here is what I got together for set one villain. And honestly, maybe I should move myself uh, a little bit. Uh, you don't need to see that word. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be up here now. So these are some of the pairings that I put together and I'll go through all of them from left to right. 
Obviously, these aren't the only ones you can do. Like I mentioned, I play uh, Palpatine Iden, and I don't have that combo listed here, um, but um, these are some that I think have really good synergy with each other, and I'll get into all of them, and then we'll go on to set one heroes, set two villains, set two hero. We'll get to all of them. This video might be a little bit long. All right, so first up on my set one villain pairing, we have Emperor Palpatine and Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now, you may be looking at this at first glance and thinking, hmm, I wonder why those two together. Uh, a couple things to note that Thrawn uh, comes out on six resources and he is a 3-9. Palpatine flips on eight resources and he is a 4-10. Uh, Palpatine on deploy lets you take control of a damaged non-leader unit. Um, Thrawn doesn't have any wet, like on deploy abilities or anything like that. Um, the main thing to look out for is the combo that they can do uh, on their you know leader side. So, starting with Thrawn, when the action phase starts, you get to look at the top player of each player's deck. So your deck, and then the three opponents at your table, and then for one resource and exhausting Thrawn, you can reveal the top player, the top card of anybody's deck, exhaust a unit that costs the same as or less than the revealed card. Um, Twin Suns makes Thrawn a lot stronger because you don't have two resource numbers, you have up to four. Obviously, you could whiff and everybody has a one resource card on top of their deck, but the odds of that happening are very, very slim. Uh, and then paired with Palpatine, um, you have action, one resource, exhaust Palpatine, defeat a friendly unit. You get to deal one damage to a unit and draw a card. Now, if you are Thrawn and you look at the top card of your deck and you see that it's something that could be beneficial this turn and something that you need this turn as an answer to something on the board or uh, something to protect your board state, maybe even a card that you can use to push in a little bit more damage to help end the game. You can use Palpatine's ability. You're paying one resource and defeating one of your units to draw the card off the top of your deck that you know exactly what it is. And then you can, you know, then do what you want with it, um, play it, um, whatever, uh, whatever you really want to do. Um, and then with Thrawn, once you've drawn the card with Palpatine, you can then pay one and uh, exhaust Thrawn or just on attack whenever he's deployed and reveal the top card of any player's deck. You could then just reveal the top card of your own deck, not knowing what it is, just so you can have more intel on what it is, but then all your opponents are gonna know as well. I think the combo is pretty cool. I think Palpatine Thrawn would do best with a blue 30 HP base, in my personal opinion. Um, and that's that combo. Let's head on to Aiden and Boba Fett. All right, so Boba Fett, as everybody knows from Constructed, he is one of the best leaders, if not the best leader in the entire game. Uh, five resource, four, seven is an insane stat line. Uh, Aiden Versio is a six resource, four, four, but she comes out shielded as well. Um, and both of these leaders are paired together because they both do stuff when an enemy unit uh, leaves play and is defeated. So as soon as an enemy unit leaves play, you can exhaust Boba Fett um, to ready a resource, uh, which is super strong. And also um, whenever he completes an attack when he's deployed, if an enemy unit has left um, play the phase, you get to ready up to two resources. Uh, and then with Ida Versio, if an enemy unit was defeated this phase, you get to heal the damage. Uh, and then on the flip side, it's the exact same thing, except you don't need to exhaust her, it just happens. So this is gonna be all about uh, removing cards uh, by way of um, damaging effects. Obviously Boba Fett says when an enemy unit leaves play, so you could use bounce effects. Uh, you wanna get the most out of this combo, so you wanna be killing stuff because Iden doesn't proc. If you waylay it, it has to be defeated. So I think the best co color combo for these two would be red because you have a lot more aggressive damage dealing effects in red than you do in green, um, but uh, you know, again, the choice is up to you. Um, I did some numbers and some number crunching. Uh, between set one and set two leaders, the total combination that you can theoretically do is like uh, 300 different leader combinations. Um, and that's with the restriction of uh, all villains can only be with villains and heroes can only be with heroes. Uh, so there's plenty of different combos to do. And then on top of that, you can pair them with any color. Um, so the choices really are endless. Next up, we have my favorite combo of set one villains. It's Krennic and Grand Inquisitor. Grand Inquisitor is obviously a six resource, three, six, and then Krennic is a five resource, two, seven. Um, Inquisitor says uh, action, exhaust. You get to deal two damage to a friendly unit with three or less power and ready it. And then whenever he is deployed on attack, you can deal one damage to a friendly unit with three or less power and ready it. 
Um, so a lot of redding shenanigans. You can uh, ways to pump out even more damage. Uh, Inquisitor is super strong, and he works extremely well with Krennic because not only does Krennic come out a turn before and can get an attack, and on his deploy side, remember Krennic has Restore 2, and each friendly unit gets plus 1, plus 0, oh, but you can use Inquisitor to ready Krennic because in, uh, the Krennic has a 2-7 body. Inquisitor is going to deal 2 damage to him, so he's going to go from a 2-7 to a 3-5 because he's going to be a damaged unit. So he gets plus one plus oh. So the turn that Krennic uh, comes out, which is the turn right before Inquisitor, which is the five resource torn, turn, <laughs> which is turn four, you can restore four off of your base and deal five damage with Krennic. It's really cool. It's a really strong combo. Personally, I think Krennic Inquisitor go well with a green base, um, but that is just my opinion. I've never built it, but um, actually I did build it. Um, I don't know if, I'm pretty sure I use green. Um, it was like a one night um, Twin Suns thing where we were using cards uh, from one of our friends' collections, Brandon, Alexis, shout out you guys. Uh, and I did Krennic Inquisitor and the combo worked a lot better than I thought it would. Um, so that's set one villains. Let's go into some set one hero combos. Now, when it comes to specifically hero combos in set one, they are mainly like flavor wins. Uh, obviously you have Luke and Leia that I have listed right here in the middle. Um, and honestly, it's really just a flavor win. You could also do Chewie and Han. You could do Casting and Jin. Not a whole lot of really cool synergy uh, between two colors. The real synergy and the heroes lie in the same color pairings. So we have Sabine Wren and Cassian Andor. Obviously, they're both red. Cassian, when you control six or more resources, he comes out as a 4-6. Sabine is a four resource, 2-5. Um, but these work really well because with Sabine's ability, you get to deal one damage to each base. So you're going to be dealing one damage here, here, here. It's pretty good. And then you can pay one and exhaust Cassian. And if you've dealt three or more damage to an enemy base, this phase draw a card. Now, you can't just Sabine ability and then Cassian ability to draw a card. It's three damage or more to an enemy base. But Sabine helps you push that extra damage. Say you can only deal two damage to one of your opponents. Sabine helps you push that third damage to get the card draw. Um, that's really some of the only synergy here. Um, but then you also get access to double red, um, which, you know, maybe you can find some good use there. Uh, and then with Chewbacca and Shirit, I found this combo to be probably one of the strongest, like, hero combos uh, in terms of, like, pure synergy because sentinels and healing is so strong um in twin suns not only are you getting double blue which access has access to a lot of healing and sentinel abilities but chewbacca um he is a seven resource two nine and then um cheer it is a five resource three five but chewbacca's ability you uh exhaust him play a unit that costs three or less from your hand and it gains sentinel till the end of the phase and then cheer it you can exhaust them to give a unit plus zero, plus two for the phase. So you're getting a plus two toughness sentinel. Um, and you can b basically make a brick wall with the Chewbacca Chirrut combo just to stall out damage to get you into the late game, which uh, light side's late game is actually pretty strong with cards like Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Mace Windu, Redemption, cards like that. Um, and then, you know, Chewie flips on seven resources as a two nine sentinel. And then if Chirrut has already died or if he's still in your hero pile for whatever, you can give plus O plus two for the phase on Chewie. He is a two nine or two, he goes from a two nine to a two eleven Sentinel grit. Um, and that is, you can do so much with that. Honestly, you really could. Next up, we have set two villain and the most obvious combo that stood out to me whenever the, uh, the set two was getting released and getting spoiled was Job of the Hutt and Bosk. Um, with Job of the Hut, he has a seven resource, two twelve, and whenever he's deployed, you get to um, capture an enemy non-leader unit with another friendly unit. Um, capturing is pretty cool in Twin Suns, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then Bosk is a five resource, four six. Uh, nothing really going on whenever he deploys, but whenever he is deployed, if you collect the bounty, you get to collect it again uh, once per round, so you can double up on some bounties, which can be pretty strong and snowbally for sure. Um, now. Uh, Job of the Hut's action is you exhaust, choose a unit for this phase against Bounty. The next unit you play this phase costs one less. And then Bosk, action, exhaust, deal one damage to a unit with a Bounty. You may give it a plus one, plus O oh for this phase. So what you do is you put a Bounty on a unit with Java, 
and then you try to take out the unit with the bounty with Bosk by pinging it for one. Um, bounties are also a really cool politic tool and a way to um, get people off of your back and getting them to attack the opponents because let's say you put a bounty on player two, player three may want that bounty so they'll go and try to take that, that unit. Um, you know, getting some heat off of your own back. Um, super cool combo. One of the most obvious from set two, in my opinion. This one is a little bit less um, straightforward. Uh, I mean, it's not really, it's not too confusing. It's Gar Saxon Hondo Onaka, right? Uh, also, I didn't really say what colors I would have paired stuff with. Uh, I kind of forgot to start doing that. The hero one, oh well. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Java, I'd probably do yellow just because you can do um, Java's Palace, right, from set two. Uh, so Gar Saxon, we have blue green. And I'd probably be pairing this with uh, yellow because upgraded units are pretty good with Gar Saxon. The combo here is Hondo Onaka smuggles out a card. You're going to be playing a lot of smuggle cards. Uh, you can exhaust them when you do. And then if you do, you give an experience token to that unit. So instead of getting plus one, plus one, they're actually going to be getting plus two, plus one because each friendly upgraded unit gets an additional plus one, plus O oh off of Gar Saxon. Uh, now, Gar Saxon is a six resource four seven that um, deploys, uh, and then whenever he is deployed, each friendly upgraded unit also has when defeated, you may return an upgrade that was attached to this unit to the owner hand. Uh, obviously, you can't return experience tokens to your hand, but uh, you'll be playing a lot of smuggle cards, a lot of upgrades, uh, maybe upgrades with smuggle, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and then Hondo, whenever he's deployed, he has raid one, so he's actually a four seven when he attacks. Um, it's an interesting combo. Uh, I would love to see somebody build it, and I would love to play against it. I'd love to play with it. I don't know, um, but a yellow base would probably go really good here. Last but not least, the leaders that I actually wanted to build, but um, couldn't really figure out the best way to do it. Um, so spoiler alert, at the end of the video, you're not gonna see a Kylo Afra list. Um, these are the leaders that I thought would have the um, some pretty cool synergy. I just couldn't really get the deck list uh, in a good spot, in my opinion. Um, I think it would go really good with the green base, but maybe blue's the way. Maybe that's why I couldn't figure it out. But we have Kylo Ren and Dr. Afra. Uh, Kylo Ren is a four resource, five, four, and he gets minus one, minus O oh, uh, for each card in your hand. So if you have a lot of cards in your hand, whenever he deploys, he's not going to be as strong. And then we also have Dr. Afra here as well. Uh, she's a five resource, two, five. Uh, so they come out super early. They're pretty aggressive. Uh, and if there's five or more different costs among cards in your discard pile, she actually gets plus three plus O. Oh, so she could be a turn four, five, five. Uh, and then when deployed, you get to choose three different cards in your discard pile uh, and then return one of them at random to your hand. It is a May ability, so you don't have to, but it's free recursion, right? It is random recursion, but it's free. Um, so Kylo Ren's all about discarding cards, buffing units. Dr. Afra at the beginning of your regroup phase, you discard a card. The whole point of this deck is to like cheat stuff into the discard pile to make Kylo Ren stronger, make Dr. Afra stronger, make cards like Fennec Shan stronger, um, using cards like Palpatine's Return uh, and just other recursion effects, uh, you know, restock and stuff like that. Um, I don't think it's quite there yet. I think it's a really cool idea and it's something that I do want to revisit at some point, uh, mainly because uh, Dr. Afra is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars in general. Uh, not like my favorite, but definitely like a top 10 of mine, Dr. Afra lore wise uh, and then kylo obviously that's my like my go-to guy right now for constructed and they synergize pretty well i just i don't think i got the list exactly where i wanted it um so kylo afra green base if you can make it let me know uh maybe blue but probably green next up we got some set two heroes i'm actually gonna go right to left this time because ray and finn um is one of the coolest ones i think here um, you can give an experience token to a unit with two or less power, and then you can defeat that uh, experience token to give him a shield. Uh, so you can basically pivot between going on offense or defense with this uh, with this list. Um, Finn is a five resource, four, six, and then Ray is a six resource, two, six. Um, so super cool. They come out uh, one turn after another. Uh, Finn comes out a little bit early, uh, and he's a four, six. So he's setting up that wall, um, trying to be a shield, clearing out units, defending your board state, and then Ray comes out, sort of brings the offensive mindset to the battlefield. I think the list is super cool. Double blue um, uh, emphasizes more healing and sentinels versus actual attacking. So I feel like if you paired Ray and Finn with a red base, I think this list could actually go a little crazy and have some force energy to it as well. Um, but that's something to play with. You know, I haven't 
messed with that one yet, but that one is on a uh, high up on my list of uh, leaders I want to build for Twin Suns. And so is the one right next to it to the left, Boba Fett and Fennec Shand. This combo is pretty dope. Uh, Fennec Shand, five resource, four, four, and Boba Fett is a six resource, four, seven. So this is really cool because with Fennec Shand, you pay one and exhaust to play a unit that costs four or less from your hand and you give it ambush. As soon as you do that, whenever it's played, before ambush is resolved, you can then exhaust Boba Fett because you've played a unit that has one or more keyword keywords because you're giving it ambush. Um, you can give a friendly unit plus one to plus O for the phase. So you can give your ambushing attacker plus one plus O. You can give any one of your friendly units plus one plus O. I think it's a really cool uh, combo. I think it's going to be fast paced and aggressive. Uh, ambushing out a lot, um, controlling the board in terms of units, uh, making sure that people don't get too out of control. And I find that this list would be paired great with a red base. And then last but not least, I kind of just put this one here. I don't really, not a not the biggest fan of it, but I wanted three <laughs> to stick with what I was doing. Um, uh, it's Lando Calrissian and Hunter. Hunter being a seven resource five eight i kind of didn't really know that and then um lando's a four resource two five i personally prefer when my leaders can come out on the same turn or close to it um, because when leaders flip in twin suns it's even more important and having one flip on turn three and then one flipping on turn six is kind of unfortunate uh lando you can play a card using smuggle and it costs two less but then you have to defeat a resource you own and control and then with Hunter, you can pay one and exhaust to reveal a resource you control. If it shares a name with a friendly unique unit, return the resource to its owner's hand and put the top card of your deck into play as a resource. I don't know. Maybe one day it'll be good. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's some cards that share names, like there's multiple Han units, or is there? There's multiple Chewy units for sure. I, I don't know, guys. I kind of just put that one here. These are the main ones you should look at. Okay. Okay. Lastly, we got some set one and set two combos. Uh, go back to doing left to right. We got Mando and Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker, you pay one exhaust, you give a shield token, and then it counts as an upgrade. So when you play an upgrade, you can exhaust the Mandalorian to exhaust an enemy unit with four or less remaining HP. Um, I Actually, now I'm reading it again. I hope that's how it works, because uh, when you use Luke, you give a shield but the, with the Mandalorian, it says when you play an upgrade, you're not really playing the shield. I'm pretty sure it would still work, but reading the card explains the card. So your guess is as good as mine, unfortunately. Um, this lit, this should work. And if the combo does work, it's going to be a pretty good control list. I would pair it with a green base. Next up, we have Kira Krennic. You can deal a damage, uh, deal two damage to a friendly unit and give it a shield by spending one and exhausting Kira. Uh, and not only would it get a shield, but it would also get plus one plus O off of Krennic. You're getting double blue here for some healing and sentinel action. And on the dark side, this would be best paired with a green base to get those late game swingers in that action. Next up, we have IG-88 and Moff Gideon. What a strange combo. I understand and I get it. Um, but this is mainly going to be like a go wide, low to the ground, cheap unit aggro, like try and win as fast as possible. Uh, you can exhaust IG to attack with the unit. If you control more units than the defending player, the attacker gets plus one plus O, and then you can attack with the unit that costs three or less. If it's attacking a unit, it gets plus one plus O. Um, units get um, overwhelmed whenever Moff's flipped, and then when IG is flipped, I believe uh, all your units get raid as well. Yep, each other friendly unit gets raid one, which is super cool. So, you know, low to the ground, cheap units, spam the field with units. Uh, they both come out on turn four, so you're going to not only have a bunch of units on the board, but you're flipping two leaders at the same time on turn four. So you're going to guaranteed have a bunch of units. It's all about going crazy. Um, red, green, and I would pair it with yellow and then just uh, fill your list with a bunch of cheap Imperial units. Uh, there's also some Underworld Bounty Hunter synergy you can throw in there because IG-88 is an Underworld Bounty Hunter. Um, but you know, you got to pick. You can either do Underworld Bounty Hunter or you can do Imperials. I feel like... Um, for the most part, Imperial units are cheaper, um, but you know, super strong aggro list. I can see it now in my noggin. Um, it would be a really cool one to build. Lastly, we got Bo-Katan and Sabine Wren. It's a double red Mandalorian tribal aggro. Um, if you attack with the Mandalorian, you get to deal the damage to your unit. You get to deal damage to all the bases. 
Um, both of them are Mandalorians. You go red, blue, uh, double red, blue, actually. Mandalorian tribal, um, you know, just an aggressive, fast paced deck. And I think you would see a lot of success with it. A lot of it, honestly. Now we are going to go over some really important keywords that I think are a lot more important in Twin Suns than they are in Constructed. So first off, we have Restore and Sentinel. These are your evergreen uh, keywords from set one. Obviously, Restore heals your base. You don't want to be the first one to die. And then when someone does die, you want to heal up as much as you can because you want to be the one with the most uh, HP on your base at the end of the game. Restore, super important. And in the exact same token on the other side, the same side, flip side, same leaf, whatever you want to say, the Sentinel um, protects your base from losing HP because they have to go through your Sentinels before they can get to you. Um, obviously, that's not always 100% the case because of Saboteur units as well. But Restore and Sentinel, super good at protecting your base and your life total. You don't want to be the guy to die. And you want to be the guy to live and you want to be the guy or gal with the most HP remaining. Now, Smuggle, Capture, and Bounty are the main keywords that came out with Set 2. And I find that they are all really cool and enticing keywords to mess around with when it comes to Twin Suns. Smuggle, as we all know, lets you play the resource from your resource bench onto the battlefield. Then you take the top card of your deck and then ready that or you play that as a exhausted resource, right? Smuggle lets you play cards from your resource bench. It makes resourcing a whole lot easier because in Twin Suns, if you're doing it in set one like me and my friends, um, as soon as you resourced it, you were never seeing it again. There were some cards and some shenanigans you could have done, but for the most part, they were too niche and not worth even trying. So Smuggle gives you a second chance at life, and if you end up smuggling the card Smuggler's Aid at the very end of the game and healing your base for 3 HP, it may just win you the game. Isn't that right, Brandon? That was crazy. Uh, capture uh, is basically another form of removal to capture units and... Um, Put them on the wayside, you know, put them on the back burner as it would be uh, and, you know, protect your guy that's capturing them with Sentinel units is always a pretty good idea. But capture can be a political tool that can be used for your benefit or, you know, for your downfall as well. Say you capture your player one, you capture player two's unit, player two then recruits uh, helps from player three and player four to take out your unit so they get theirs back so then they can start attacking you with it. Capture is something you gotta be kind of careful with. And the same can be said with bounties. Bounty is a really cool mechanic for Twin Suns because you can basically point the aggression in the direction of other players, uh, keep them off your back, sort of distract them, say, here, look, here's a shiny prize of readying resources or getting resources off the top of your deck. Go attack this guy and I'm gonna do my own thing over here for a little bit. Um, Bounty is really cool and I find that it is a great addition not only to constructed Star Wars, but to Twin Suns as a whole. Finally, we can look at some cards that actually get better in Twin Suns. Move myself back up top and we'll start with some blue cards. I'm not really going over a whole lot of different cards here um, because there is a lot, but I'm specifically talking about cards that get better. So cards that already weren't good and constructed, getting good um, in Twin Suns. So here we have Del Miko and Gideon Hask. Del Miko, each event an opponent plays costs one more. So, you know, making it harder for not only one opponent, but all your opponents to play uh, events, which is really cool. And then Gideon Hask, uh, when an enemy unit is defeated, give an experience token to a friendly unit. It says when an enemy unit is defeated, and it does not say do this once per turn. On a good turn, Gideon Hask can fill your board with five, six, seven experience tokens. He's super strong, and if you see him on the other side of the board, kill him. If you get to play him, protect him with your life. Let's go to the next color in the beautiful Star Wars Unlimited color wheel, which is green. And here we have a few cards from the new set as well. So we have Agent Callus, Rule with Respect, and the Finalizer. Agent Callus is a 4-4 with Ambush, and when another unique unit is defeated, you may draw a card, use this ability only once each round. Now, if this card was like um, Gideon Hask and it didn't have this last line of text, it would actually be completely broken and probably banned if there was a ban list for Twin Suns. Um, but, you know, card draw is super good to have. Uh, rule with respect. 
A friendly unit captures each enemy non-leader unit that attacked your base this phase. So if you are getting wailed on, if you are, you know, a, a key player on in your pod of players, if you are, uh, you know, the one winning and everyone's smacking on you to try and get you a little bit lower, you drop a rule with respect near the end of the phase after everybody's swung at you. They have no units left. You have a unit with like four, five, six captured guys underneath it. Obviously, you want to protect him with your life because everybody's going to be gunning for that unit. Um, but it could be a pretty cool, you know, ha ha, take that uh, card in the game. Who knows? I think it's pretty cool. Last for green, we have the 11 resource, 1111 finalizer. It has overwhelm and when played, choose any number of friendly units. Each of those units captures an enemy non-leader unit in the same arena. Just a board wide capture like rule with respect but um on multiple units instead of one unit having the entire load um i think it's pretty cool the odds of you playing finalizer are pretty slim unless it's one of those games that has a lot of politicking back and forth healing sentinels uh, and you can make it to the late game finalizer can be pretty cool but i don't see him hitting the table all too often in twin suns games next up we have my favorite color in twin suns which is red there's so many cards in red that get better because so many cards in red have choose an arena or each player or each opponent like so many cards here are some of my favorites smoke and cinders bombing run and force surrender smoke and cinder says each player discards all but two cards from their hand you don't know what everyone else has in their hand but if you have, if you know what's in your hand and there's two cards that you want, the rest of you'll be, you'll be fine with discarding. Make everyone go through the tough decision of discarding a bunch of cards. Next up is Bombing Run. Choose an arena and deal three damage to each unit in that arena. Used to only affect two people, but now it affects four. So if all your opponents are pretty heavy on the ground and you don't really have a whole lot of ground units, but you do have a few space units, drop a bombing run, wipe out the ground arena, and then you are basically doing a one-sided board wipe at that time. Sure, you may have injured or defeated one or two of your own units, but if that's where everybody was and no one else is in space with you, and vice versa with space and ground, bombing run can be a swinger of a card. Now we have four surrender. You get to draw two cards and each opponent whose base you've damaged this phase discards two cards from their hand. If you're playing against anybody running Sabine, you can guarantee that they have this card somewhere in their deck or in their hand because they are never going to resource this card. Sabine ability and to force surrender. They draw two cards and then they're basically discarding six from their opponents. It's actually insane. Uh, obviously, there's a bunch of other ways to damage all your opponents, but Sabine and force surrender is a match made in heaven. Oh my goodness, let me tell you. Next up, we have yellow. We got Lotho Insurgent. Two resource, three, two. And then if you've played another card this phase, each opponent draws a card, then discards a random card from their hand. The cool thing about this is they don't just get to pick what they discard. So they basically shuffle up their hand and then, you know, however they want to do it, have you do it. Maybe they pick a random one. They could accidentally discard their bomb that they were holding on to, which is really cool. Evacuate returns each non-later unit to its owner's hand. This is pretty powerful in a deck um, where at six resources, if you're playing yellow, and you're able to get both of your leaders on the board at the same time, and either people have already played their leaders and they've died, or maybe people's leaders can't come out yet, you evacuate, you send everything back to their hands, and then you are the only one on the board with your leaders. Um, also, it's like just a pseudo board wipe. You don't have to use it in that situation, but if there's a bunch of stuff going on and you don't like that, evacuate. Boom, and then outmaneuver, you get to choose an arena, similar to bombing run, but instead of dealing three damage to everything, you're exhausting everything, which is really cool buy you a turn, buy everybody a turn. Really good politicking tool for sure as well. Then we got some other cards, cards that aren't really tied down to a color. We got tech, which gives every single friendly resource smuggle, which is basically their um, cards cost plus two. And then no bargain, which is the dark side card where each opponent discards a card and then you get to draw one, which uh, another really cool card. Uh, last but not least in the middle, we got the mercenary gunship. Kind of just threw that in there because it's a colorless card and anybody can do this. So. Um, it's just four resources to take advantage or take control of it. Not advantage. You do not take advantage of the mercenary gunship, um, but take control of it rather. Uh, so it's a two resource, three, two. It's super cool early game. Uh, and obviously it kind of looks like um, Xanadu blood, but it's not Xanadu blood. Do not let the um, the media fool you. It's not that it's mercenary gunship. But say later in the game, uh, player one dropped a mercenary gunship turn one and um, you want it because you want to deal with something else in space or maybe you want to swing in with it, 
pay for resources. Take that sucker. Uh, if you didn't have any other plays that turn, it's pretty risky, and I don't think anyone ever would pay the four, but if you have nothing else going on, or if you have a plan, and you want to sack it maybe with Palpatine, oh, now we're cooking. Um, then yeah, Mercenary Gunship, it's pretty cool. Now, as we were mentioning before, double color cards get a little bit better because you can still do two colors in Twin Suns with the added benefit of running a double color. Um, a lot of people are going to be running three color car, uh, three colors for Twin Suns, but for those of you that do do double colors, doo doo, <laughs> doo doo, um, it's actually going to be pretty good for you. Now, some double color card you're going to be playing in your Twin Suns decks regardless if you think it's worth paying the extra two. Cards like Cunning, Vigilance, Aggression, Command. You may be playing those anyway, but cards like Protector, General Krill, Saw Gerrera, Final Showdown from the new set. These cards are double you know, double color cards that you may, you know, like so, oh, three resource to give something Sentinel. If you're playing Chirrut Chewy, it's one resource. Krell, uh, each other friendly unit gains when defeated, you may draw a card. That's cool, but why would I ever play pay seven for that for a five, four? No, thank you. But if you're playing Palpatine with Thrawn, uh, not Thrawn, with Tarkin, or Malf Gideon, maybe, he becomes a little bit better. Uh, so, so on and so forth for the your red and yellow. You kind of get the point. Um, anything that can run double colors, um, the double color cards just get that much better. Finally, last but not least, I will show you guys the deck that I whipped up earlier today. We got Twin Suns Bounties by Neevils. We are running Jabba the Hutt, Bosk, with the yellow Jabba's Palace base. Uh, and this is what the deck looks like. Obviously with Singleton, it's pretty long, um, but this is how it looks like on SWUDB, whenever you wanna look at the deck image for your Twin Suns list, because everything is one of, obviously. Um, but I feel like we have a pretty good curve here in terms of uh, you know resource curve, uh, a lot of bounty synergy. Uh, it's mainly um, bounty hunters and underworld cards in here, but the synergy is pretty great. Um, cards that stand out to me that I think are really, really cool is um, Headhunting. Let's see if I can get... Uh, I'll probably show you a different way, but Headhunting is going to be really cool. Uh, Toro Calican is going to be really cool. He isn't constructed already. Uh, Relentless Pursuit is going to be a great card that I bet will clutch up for me at some point. Um, obviously, I'll be running the best card in the game, Overwhelming Barrage. Uh, and then we also get to run some pretty cool Underworld cards like Maul, Jabba's Rancor, uh, Phoenix Shan, and then we have the finalizer just because if we get there, it could be pretty cool, right? Uh, so let me show you guys some of the cards I think are going to be pretty cool in the deck. Um, here we go. So, Salacious Crumb is also cool because, you know, healing is good. Uh, healing and Sentinel. Remember, Gamorrean Retainer, Sentinel, pretty good stuff. Um, we got the Gamorrean Guards for more Sentinel. I did have um, the Cellblock Guard in the list at one point, but he did not make the cut. Um, a bunch of Bounty Hunters, a bunch of Underworld stuff. Recursion with Bounty Hunter Crew. Um, Jabba's Rancor is going to be awesome. Maul is going to be awesome. I can feel it now. Uh, some upgrades that are pretty cool, you know, a bunch of bounties here. And we also have the Hotshot Blaster, and we have a Jetpack as well. Really cool equipment. Uh, a final showdown as like a win condition. Uh, where hopefully if I have a bunch of units on board uh, and people don't expect it, I can ready them all and swing at somebody for lethal for eight. I think it's worth eight. I don't know. We'll try it. I haven't uh, played the deck yet, but I have built it and it's ready to go. Um, also, we have head hunting here. You get to attack with up to three units. They can't attack bases for these attacks, but each bounty hunter that attacks gets plus two plus oh. So you're getting some pretty big bonuses out of that. Uh, bounty Hunters, we got, um, this would be a 6-4 Bounty Hunter crew. This would be an 8-6. Zuckus would be an 8-6. You're attacking for 5 with Kersantan, 6 with Boss, 5 with Django, uh, 6 with Forlom. Like, I feel like that card would be a really good way to stabilize the board, if not wipe it for your enemies, but keep it um, stable for yourself. And it's not even that expensive. It's a two-resource card. So if you have 10 resources, you could headhunt, sort of clear the board out, final showdown... Win the game. What are you saying, huh? What are you saying? I think it's pretty cool. Um, some deck building um, things to keep in your mind. Um, uh, rules that I tend to follow, and it seems to be a lot of other people follow as well. You want to have around 15 to 20 combined events and upgrades. It's just a good number to have it at right now. Obviously, it will change whenever the format switches to 80 
cards in total. Um, with space units, you want to try and stick around anywhere from 10 to 15. Uh, I'm currently at 9. Uh, I feel like it's a good number. There's some cool stuff in here, uh, I think. This guy's really cool. I actually don't think I could build it. I don't think I have him. Did I put him in the deck? I might be missing that one. Uh, and then for ground units, you want anywhere from 20 to 25 ground units as well. Um, that's where the majority of the game is played, uh, both in Constructed and in Twin Suns. Obviously, you want to have a nice curve. Uh, my curve, you know, starts high at the beginning and tapers off towards the end. This is a pretty good looking curve. Obviously, um, my ones and twos look inflated because of a lot of bounties and uh, cheap events that I have. And then we also have a couple of zero costs as well. Um, and then there's just this random 11 over here. And then um, cards by rarity. Obviously, we only have three legendary cards in the deck. So when it comes to affordability, Twin Suns is really not that expensive. As you can see, this deck list comes in at a whopping $55, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm not running a bunch of expensive legendaries that I could, mainly because I don't have them. I don't have Boba Fett in the list. I don't have uh, Darth Vader in the list, but I probably wouldn't because he's not a bounty hunter or an underworld unit. Uh, I don't have any of the double color events other than Final Showdown. I don't have Aggression or Command or Cunning because uh, boring and cringe. Um, and yeah, this is the list. Uh, let me know what you guys plan on building down in the comment section below. I know this was a long video, but it took me a long time to make all the graphics. Not only that, but to you know record this too. This video was probably four or five hours in the making for me today on my lovely day off. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, give me to 500 before August 1st, before I move into a new apartment, new apartment. It's one I used to live in with my friend. I'm going back. Um, but yeah, this has been James. We'll make an opening. Play Twin Sons. Play it with me, too. Uh, if you can. I'm a cool guy, and I like playing it. So, you know. Bye.